What is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Max Stack Motorsports. Here again in the GTI as always. Continuing on with our track day build. Um, the last video I left you guys with was um, putting on our racing harness. Which so far I mean fits pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. That's, uh, that's for sure. But now we're going to be getting outside of the car again. And uh, really tackling some of the outstanding stuff that I like to have done. And stuff that needs to be done in order for this uh, car to see the track this year. So what I think we're gonna do today is um, we're gonna take a lot of the stuff off the front, we're gonna take off the bumper again, uh, the rebar, so the metal uh, reinforcement bumper that's behind the plastic bumper, that's gonna come off. We're gonna do some measurements. Um, yeah, we're gonna work on getting ourselves our bash bar to help us get some more clearance as far as the new power steering cooler setup as well as reverting back to the original oil cooler setup with the fan, the bigger cooler, all that jazz. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, as we go along with this video too, I'll probably start sea foaming. Um, I use sea foam deep creep. I'm not sponsored by them. I really wish I was. But um, I'm going to start going over all the hardware as well for the turbo since we're going to be getting that turbo replaced uh, hopefully in the next coming weeks depending on how the schedule goes. But um, as far as today goes, again, mostly just going to focus on some random stuff that uh, kind of has to be done and looking forward to. This will be my first time installing a bash bar or making a bash bar. Just letting you guys know, if uh, if you guys see it in this video, it's not going to be the most prettiest thing. Uh, still got to get it all powder coated when we're done with it too. But um, it should help a lot with with um what we need for the clearance but anyways guys let's uh let's get to it welcome back again it's a beautiful day out let's go again guys as you're going around here just remember you got your t30s or sorry your t20s on each fender well here and then moving across the front the t30s and throughout the bottom of the bumper you guys should know by now again i'm just going to kind of fast forward through all this stuff Make sure you guys keep everything together. As always, um, yeah, these grills, I actually have a bit of an idea of what I'm gonna do to replace these um, as far as the bumper goes. Just remember guys, this is like a scrap bumper that we bought last year to do all this uh, Swiss cheese stuff to it. So um, yeah, I have something kind of planned when it comes to these bottom grills, which we'll work on as we go. But um, yeah, let's get the bumper off so we can take a look again at the reinforcement bar behind it and figure out how we're going to do our bash bar for this setup. So looking back here guys again at our reinforcement bumper. Again, this is the stock one that we put the holes in from last year. Um, I mean, a good idea at first, but I think this cooler is just way too small for what I want to actually do. And, um, you know, I, I thought about it a lot over the off season, and I think I decided that it'd probably be best if I just went with a better bash bar. We're going to have some plates that we have already that I'm going to kind of trim this all out, as well as just a two inch or two and a half inch um, kind of bar that's gonna go across and then we'll weld it all up and then that'll give us a lot more space and we'll be able to tuck everything back in. First of all, a lot higher up and a lot further back, which is uh, the big the big deal. So um, yeah, you know what I mean? Not a bad concept. I wish I would have thought about it the first time. Again, there isn't many prefab bash bars out there for the Mark IV, but there is one um, from Gray, yeah, Gray Fab, somewhere in the States, they're on Instagram as well. You guys can always purchase one from them. Uh, really, really, really high quality stuff. I just, uh, yeah, I just couldn't justify getting it sent up to here and um, dealing with shipping and all that stuff. I'd rather just kind of make my own, but yeah, let's get this bad boy off again. Um, it kind of sucks, I have to take the underglow off here. I'll have to use some sort of 3M tape to remount it all, but uh, let's get going on that part. All right, guys, so now that we got the rebar out, we got our bumper skin right there. This is what we're gonna be dealing with. So I got these plates. Um, I actually had these plates for a long time. 
These are the plates I use for all the demo cars. So you guys will be seeing a lot of these plates throughout the summer um, when we start doing the figure eights as well as our bar. So um, I know it's a little rusty. It's a little old. It's been sitting in the backyard for a while. But again, this is what we're going to use to replace that. So this is about a two inch bar, solid steel, about a quarter inch thick. We're going to be using this to replace that. So it will come out something similar to that, which will eliminate, if you guys take a look at the difference, all that space right there. So the tricky thing is, is just getting this all lined up with the plates to maximize um, the amount of room that we can get behind the skin. So what I'm gonna try to do is probably try to find a happy medium in here. That way I know how much I have to um, cut. And then as far as the mounting goes, we got these guys right here. So I'm probably gonna cut the ends of this bumper off and then just trace this whole section onto my plate and then do all the holes that are needed needed sorry um it's gonna be a huge pain in the ass for sure just a lot of drilling a lot of grinding i don't have any torches so um yeah let's get going on that it's just gonna be uh quite the little operation here but i think when it's all said and done guys and this is all powder coat and stuff it's gonna make a, a huge difference when it comes to our cooling setups and just a quick tip guys um always use a guard on these uh i don't have one so um we got the shades on bud but uh, definitely definitely if you have a guard on these make sure you guys keep it on i'm just gonna say that for uh yeah for safety reasons but uh let's get cutting on this here hopefully i don't burn my corvette uh sock and sneaker setup here but um hopefully everything goes as planned <laughs> There's one side done, so you guys can see how it kind of sits a lot lower now, which would definitely help with our long-term measurements. And then now we just have to do this side. Once that's done, we'll be able to trace it out on our platforms here and get those all cut up as well as getting the holes in for all our bolts to make sure everything fits. Yes, guys, there we go. Nice and flat and even. So again, we're gonna take our measurements now. We're gonna do our height and then that will determine on how much we're gonna have to cut. Um, I have tons of that um, tubing kicking around. That will determine on how much tubing we're gonna do and cut to make sure that we stick out. Um, I mean, further enough or far out enough, sorry, um, that we can fit our coolers in, but not too far in, you know what I'm saying? We also don't wanna to be too far out or else our bumper skin's not gonna really fit on. Um, I'm gonna be shaving the inside of the bumper skin as well um, to go with our kind of new idea of what we're kind of thinking here. So hopefully that all works. But now we can start doing our tracing and getting everything ready to go as far as getting our mounting plates sorted out. So now we're gonna trace out the mounting plate here to get it all ready to go. Um, definitely not looking forward to cutting these. I'm gonna go through so many wire wheels and um, just playing with fire, literally, with that grinder there, but it has to be done. Um, if you have a set of torches or if you can go somewhere, you, you can, um, you know what I mean, laser cut, all that jazz, guys. Uh, definitely, definitely a much better option for sure. But uh, have a nice Sharpie here again. Get it all set up and ready to go. There's our outlines right there. So that works out pretty good so far. Um, don't forget guys, do the holes. You're gonna need those for sure. I mean, I don't think I need all of them, but I know for sure that um, these two right here are the 13 mils. I mean, you could probably just get away with that. But again, right here we have the T30s that go there as well. So we got everything coming together here, guys. Um, as you guys can see already, 
already made a couple cuts again um, when you're doing this too as well this goes for pretty much any bash bar really um, like I said I'm not really a professional at doing this but um, as long as you get your angles in so right here you guys can see I kind of have a couple indents as long as I put my angles in I can always grind out and and round everything off which even at the end of it I'll probably do that just to make sure it's as clean as possible before getting it all powder coated but um, yeah starting to come together I'm gonna pack it in for the night right now it's starting to get a little late I have some stuff to take care of as well but um, the next clip you guys will see we'll be back again cutting these things up getting them all ready to go for our bash bar so it's the next day here guys we're continuing our bash bar build and as you guys can see we have our mounting plates all done and ready to go so if you see we kind of grinded everything up and then we took a nice sanding wheel rounded everything nicely the best we can get I, it was a bit of a, a pain in the ass but if you take a look so you have your two different sides here and then using the stock bumper this is just um, another stock uh, bumper that I had kicking around but if we grab our plates you guys can see there we go so that's the best I can get them really but I mean it's better than nothing and you I mean even though it's not like perfect um, the clearances should be okay as far as putting them onto the car so what we're gonna be doing now is we got our drill with the step bit um, yeah hopefully this one lasts uh, I got a lot of experience in the past with trying to drill through these these plates here with step bits and even though it does work it does take a long time and it's a huge pain in the ass if you're using battery power so we have ourselves a plug-in powered drill right here and you can see where all our marks are as far as where the holes are going to be again um, the two main ones for the 13 mils I think they're one of these right here and then we have the other ones for those little t30s or t20s but I again I'm not sure if we're gonna have to use them um, and then yeah we're gonna be doing the holes I'm not sure what size yet this thing goes to uh, a half inch so that should be more than enough but if not if we have to bore it out a bit we could do that and then use our washers if needed so uh yeah let's get going on getting our holes drilled out for our plates there's the first one guys and uh yeah of course already broke a bit um you know I mean as good as these things are uh they do tend to break pretty easily so uh it's just the way it is you know what I mean but anyways yeah first hole is done uh what I'm gonna do now too is go and grab the bolts from the mark IV that attach these mounting plates to the frame just make sure that it's wide enough again i'm going to try to overboard just a little bit this is currently at a half inch but um you know what i mean there's little tolerances that you never know you might need and i want to make sure that i'm able to get all the bolts on without having them you know what i mean crooked or cross threaded or any of that stuff i want to have them sitting in there as best as i can but instead of wasting your guys time showing you guys each and every um bolt or a uh, hole here that i have to drill out um i'll bring you guys back in but again make sure you guys have a bunch of step bits just in case you never know but uh, we're getting there for sure hopefully once these holes are done uh the hard part and the intensive labor part as far as the grinding and sanding and drilling is all done and we'll be able to start getting everything all measured up for our welding there we go guys i'm just gonna go with the two the two bolts um where is it this guy right here so these 13 mils that go on i'm just gonna go with these guys um just judging by some other <coughs> sorry some other bash bars that i've seen in the past two um yeah we're just gonna do that i'm starting to really go hard on these tools here as well but um yeah so you guys can see all the holes and yeah they fit in there no problem i'm still gonna kind of bore them out just a little bit with kind of this fatter one here because that will allow me just to kind of smooth it out make sure everything looks good but if we put everything together here this one goes here and this guy goes right there boom there we go so matches up perfectly and again 
Um, it's not perfect, but um, as far as the actual bracket itself, but again, I think most of the clearances are okay. And if I have to, again, guys, I'll show you guys the, the sanding disc that I used to kind of like smooth this right out. It works like a charm, but um, yeah, I'm just happy those holes are done. So yeah, now, like I said, I'm gonna take this guy right here and just kind of clean him out just a little bit. That way there's no burrs, um, no lips, none of that stuff in there. And then we're gonna bring everything to the car and do all our measurements to make sure that when we weld everything together, it has the right height, it has the right um, length away from the rad so that it kind of mimics our stock OEM rusty <laughs> um, reinforcement bar here because I really do not want to have to make these again. I'm telling you right now, I took an absolute beating with that grinder, but so far, so good. Hopefully it all comes together rather nicely. So before we get the bumper off again, guys, and get going on our brackets, this right here. So this is what I use to really like sand these bad boys down and kind of round everything up. Again, it's not perfect. I'm no fabricator for sure. This is my first time doing this, but you can see like how rounded and smooth they are compared to, you know, I mean, if you're just cutting it with a straight grinding wheel, which is what we used obviously to get them towards the shape. But uh, yeah, I would highly, invest in one of these wheels right here works wonders but yeah let's get the bumper off again guys um there's just a couple of little tabs holding it on and then we can take off the um, swiss cheese bar that we have on there on there right now and then, then get these things all mounted up and uh, get our measurements going so what i've done here now guys you can see so like you can see how much wider i guess the bar or the tube actually is compared to the bumper but again remember that we cut these off so it's almost exactly the same it's just there's no angle on it so I might have to do like a 45 here but we're gonna see I'm gonna see if the bumper does fit with the first if it does I'm not gonna worry about it but if it doesn't then obviously I'm gonna have to probably just take a 45 off on each side again if you do have um, a bending tool that you can use some sort of pipe bender I would highly suggest it, it just makes it a lot easier but uh, yeah a little bit of uh, hillbilly um, innovation going on over here as far as the jack but I think this is going to be the perfect height here again we're taking the average pretty much of what the stock rebar is that way um, it should fit in perfectly where it does with the skin on so it does cover up the holes as far as the ducting goes but again we're going to be losing all this surface area as well so and not to mention that this is rounded which helps a lot with the airflow so I should be okay for, as far as the ducting goes, but I think this is where we're gonna go. Um, I'm gonna measure it out. And again, guys, um, I have the car up on ramps right now, so I'm using the measurement with the car on the ramps. So you don't have to use this measurement if you're gonna be doing it with the car on the ground. Just make sure whatever way you are doing your measurements is the way you're gonna be mounting the bar or else you're gonna be all over the place and you're gonna have a bar sitting at the headlights and stuff like that. So, but um, it's coming together. Again, really happy how these brackets turned out, but let's see how uh, this rusty thing here works out. All right, so we got our height now, which is <laughs> 23 and a quarter inches from the ground using these ramps. So that's gonna give us pretty much, again, the average right in the middle of where we wanna be for this, uh, this setup. Sorry, I got ants all over me. And then, we're going to average out to with the 5.25 as far as where we want to go away from the rad and the plates. So um, again, guys, this is my first time doing this. So please, this could all go like to absolute, um, absolute mess here and not work out at all. But you guys are along for the journey with it. But uh, yeah, so now that we have our measurements all said and done, let's get this bash bar off. The, the OEM one and we'll get our plates on and then there's a couple small things that I got to do as well um, I'm gonna have to trim this guy right here so this is for the hood latch and everything I have to take that off and, and trim a bit of that just so I can fit my actual lines um, but you might not have to worry about that and then what we can do is uh, yeah get everything set up for welding so as you guys can see there that one is literally perfect Everything fits on there good. This one, however, um, when I was doing the tracing, I was tracing everything from the underside 
of the stock rebar or the stock um, bumper there and I forgot to take into account the tow hook so you guys can see here now right here I'm gonna have to go in the back there with the grinder and just do these notches that way it fits over the um, the tow hook here and then other than that uh, hopefully it does work should be okay but this one like I said fits in there perfectly again with the 213 mils nice and flush nice and tight no issues gives me a lot of clearance still but uh, yeah so let's get grinding on that and then I'll smooth it all over there we go guys um, definitely not the prettiest but again use the angle grinder there got everything all cut up and then we massaged it with that um, sanding disc to kind of clean it up but yeah fits in there really nice now you can see the cool uh, the um, oil cooler again I'm gonna have to quickly just go and grind this before we get welding so you guys can see now we went ahead and we cut our little um, kind of mounts our little nubs here that are gonna go onto the plates that are attached to the frame so these are two and a half inch each and then obviously clean them all up fresh metal for our welding and then we clean up the bar in the area that we're gonna be welding on so um, yeah hopefully this all works out pretty good here it should again I'm probably gonna have to cut a 45 on here but I can worry about that later on and then um, I mean we still got to do our tabs for our cooling as well as getting this thing all powder coated but um, yeah slowly but surely we're getting there let's get this all mounted on the car hopefully all the measurements are as good as uh, as I got them out to be and then we can get it all welded up and then I'll be our bash bar completed. So there's our first weld there guys. Uh, a little bit of popcorn but uh, should be nice and strong. Hopefully it looks good when everything's all power coated, but yeah, a little bit off on some of the angle grinder cuts. I mean, if you have a chop saw with a metal, a metal blade on it, probably the best bet. So you get that true um, straight edge. But there's the first one. We're gonna work on the second one and then it's putting our bar on and we're good to go. There's our second weld guys. Uh, I had to take a hammer a little bit just to kind of get it to line up with the other one there but I mean yeah definitely not pretty but if this was a SEMA car we all know that it would fit right in. <laughs> Anyways um, yeah we got our two mounts here everything's all nice and level so now it's time to get our actual tube get the tube mounted that takes care oh, a lot of uh, a lot of headaches today trying to get it all lined up it's got the bar all lined up now again if you guys have anyone to help you it definitely does help but we got a good old big red over here with a couple attachments to give us a, a hand I mean this is as level as I can get it really I'm gonna have to just kind of lift up a little bit just to kind of fill in the gap but uh, yeah guys here goes nothing there we go guys so there's our bar all welded up um, yeah strong as an ox for sure nice and level which is a big thing again if you guys have someone to help you it makes a huge difference um, it was pretty hard but just uh, big red and um, my own two hands but um, yeah hopefully should do the job again pretty strong it's not the prettiest but it does work which is the the main thing it's going to give us a lot more space for the new cooler or the cooler that was over here which is a lot bigger than that for sure as well as the power steering cooler um just got to work out some options as far as mounting everything instead of welding brackets onto here um you know man i might work with some sort of strapping option we'll see if i can 
I can fiddle around with uh, this aluminum strapping here. I don't know. We'll see what I can do with that. But uh, yeah, and then the bar will go off to Rice Rocket to get powder coated, cleaned up. That way when it comes back and no one can see it, it's, uh, it's looking good. And hopefully I won't have to use it at any point with uh, with this car but uh, yeah again guys um, strictly a track car type of thing don't be doing this for the street I mean if you guys got to put big intercoolers all that stuff you guys can worry about that there are so many fabricators out there that are so good at this stuff um, gray fab in the States uh, Arizona I think he's from I could be wrong on that but makes one hell of a killer bash bar very 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 high quality um, pricey but but definitely worth worth the price especially if you're uh you're down in the states there so um in the meantime guys i really appreciate you guys watching another one hopefully this video helps you guys out a little bit this goes for not just mark fours but any other bash bar you guys want to make um if you guys have any questions again you guys can comment um feel free to subscribe like the video all that jazz and then check us out max attack motorsports on instagram as always Hopefully see you guys soon with some more stuff. We're going to get going on our turbo rebuild or replacement as well as getting the power steering lines all um, figured out for the power steering cooler here. And then by the time that stuff's all set in stone, this bar should be back. A couple more things to go and then hopefully we can get on the track. So um, yeah, thanks again guys for watching another one. I really do appreciate it. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy your day. And we will talk to you soon. Bye for now.